Welcome back to a brand new coffee tech break with Jan. Your place to be for the latest and greatest on the poly products, tips and tricks, unboxing videos, and actually today, really excited to show you a brand new version for the Studio X and the G7500 version 3.4. Really an extensive one, so there's quite some new features. Now, a couple of weeks ago, we had version 3.3.2. So what I did, I consolidated all those new things into one presentation. So after looking at this video, you're fully up to date with the latest and greatest. Now, let me jump in my computer and walk you through that presentation. Take a cup of coffee, sit back, and I will walk you through that 3.4 presentation. And so, as I said, it includes everything also from the 3.3.2 release. So you got everything together in here. Now, what is important with every new release, we got updated apps. And so we added the latest Zoom app, the 5.6. We added the latest Teams app. Uh, also, we added some new functionality, for example, to the device mode app, uh, the 8x8 app is removed we added a new app and the dialpad app so this is changing with all those releases uh, and uh, usually through my channel uh, if there's some exciting news uh, as we have now with 3.4 i always try to push out and uh, some uh, some new videos now what is important with those updates is usually when you use Zoom or you use Teams, and those updates are pushed out through those platforms. But we've also some apps which don't provide those updates. And then it is important in the web UI to tick that enable automatic updates or at least to initiate the upgrade process. And so you get those latest updates. And also make sure the TCA is paired. So that one will also automatically get those updates uh, so be aware of that uh, when you're using some uh, video uh, provider uh, which doesn't offer that and also you can use a lens and uh, that's a centralized cloud management platform brand new where you can see all your devices and you can also push out software and uh, so in case you uh, have a provider that doesn't support that uh, so keep that in mind now, this is concerning the updates and some tips and tricks. Refreshed icons. So in the 3.4 release, if you use it in poly OS mode, you got refreshed icons, modern look and feel, and it's now across the portfolio using uh, those same icons. I think this is very nice on the TC8 and on the TV UI. And uh, you see now those new icons. Uh, and then you're also aware that you're using and uh, that uh, the brand new version. Now, one which I'm also really exciting about is initial setup has changed. So usually uh, you had to connect the LAN and you had to connect the LAN to set the provider, set the time and date, etc. And you could connect to it. But now, if it's not connected through LAN, it will automatically prompt you to set Wi Fi. And this is, I think, a very nice use case. Think about home office, where you don't have to provide uh, the, the LAN port or the uh, uh, the wall outlet in every room. Uh, think about a trolley. Think about a trolley with just a touch screen uh, and an X3650 on top. You just put in the power. Maybe you're in different classrooms, etc. I can think of so many use cases. And, uh, but you need to be aware that if you don't use a touch screen, you need to use a mouse or use uh, that uh, IR remote. So we have a remote, uh, which is an optional component for the Studio X. Uh, it comes with the G7500, but uh, you can use that, of course, also. The TC8 doesn't work over Wi-Fi, so you cannot pair that uh, uh, using it when you're using it over that, uh, that network. I think also, it saves space and specifically in home office i think i'm okay with using a mouse and to join a meeting to mute unmute it doesn't need a separate device i think because also that requires poe etc and so for a home office or for a trolley which you're moving around uh, i think you're very well served uh, with using a mouse or that remote 
or which I think is really nice is using that touchscreen. And so because then you have also additional functionality with some apps like whiteboarding, etc. Good to know, initial setup. Now, what more has been enhanced is it is not only on the 2.4 gigahertz now, but with the 3.4, you also get it on the 5 gigahertz. And you probably know those pros and cons. Eh? So 2.4, longer range, can go through walls, etc. But it offers lower speeds. Eh? And with the 5 gigahertz, this is really ready for video. Eh? But also you need to have a good coverage. And it cannot go through walls. So just the Depending on your situation, you probably use uh, one of them, uh, but we support them now. So think about those home office scenarios, executive offices, I think is really, really flexible now. If you need to change something, you can always do that. So initially, uh, when, you're not an, uh, when there's not a LAN connected, uh, it will prompt you to set your Wi-Fi settings. But if you need to change that to another Wi-Fi provider, you can easily use that, uh, do that with a remote or use that mouse. You go through the system settings. And as you can see, you got now that Wi-Fi network over there where you can change that to another provider. Really powerful. You got the virtual keyboard there. So you can just use uh, that mouse and, uh, and change that. Really powerful. This is the change in the initial setup. There's a new app which added in the 3.4 release, and that's the Downpad app. Uh, so as I said, the AB8 has been removed, but we added now the Downpad conference room app. Uh, so probably something that is used uh, a lot in the US, uh, but uh, yeah, it's a brand new app available on, on the device, which you can select just like Teams, just like Zoom, etc. Now, what is I think also an interesting one is with that 3.4 release, we got the latest Zoom APK, 5.6, and that adds a lot of new functionality and some really exciting ones. So uh, first one, I think you can now use your iPhone, uh, your Android phone to control the device. So you have the calendar, you got the mute, the volume control, you can join the meeting. It pairs with the device. So you walk into a room, you can pair it with the device and you can use it. And I know due to COVID, uh, there's a lot of people who don't want to use those uh, touch panels in the room. So now uh, you can just use your own remote, your own device to join meetings. I think a really, really nice one. What you also see is the Wi-Fi support here. So Wi-Fi means that if the device is 100% in the zoom mode, Wi-Fi is available now. And I'm already thinking of those home office scenarios, but also those uh, hybrid learning scenarios uh, when you use the device in different rooms on trolleys, etc. And you just want to put in the power, start up the system and it's ready to go. The Wi-Fi support is in there now, the 2.4 and the 5 uh, gigahertz. And now, this is interesting one, direct guest join. So what Zoom has done is they have embedded the sort of Chromium Teams app inside the Zoom APK. So if you start a Zoom meeting uh, or if you start a Teams meeting, it will use the Chromium browser to join uh, the Teams meeting. So there's no CVI. This is just really an application running on the Studio X30, X50 or G7500 in combination with the Zoom app. And you can just join. It has some limitations, like you cannot share content. Eh? So you need to be as a Teams uh, PC user uh, in that meeting to share something. Uh, the uh, resolution is limited uh, to 720p. It's a single screen thing. So there are some limitations, but it, I've tested it and it works really nice. I would just uh, recommend to try it uh, to try it out. Virtual background is available now in the 5.6. So again, uh, if you're in a home office, there's a challenge looking at, uh, at spaces. So now you can add that virtual background to make sure that only uh, the person is, uh, is visible in the right uh, setting. What is also supported is now the studio USB 
So you can hook that up to the G7500 and uh, yeah, for example, use that or use that as an additional camera. And uh, that's also possible. So here you see multiple cameras in this room. This is an X50 with, for example, here in the corner, you see an uh, Eagle Eye uh, 4 USB uh, as a sort of global room shot. That's also a possibility uh, with, uh, with the zoom app. There was already a possibility, but you can switch the camera using the TC8 uh, which, uh, which running that, uh, that zoom control app. Now let's uh, continue because we got still a lot of information out there. Uh, MTR for Android. This is also moving fast forward. Again, they also added the Wi-Fi support. So if you are in native teams, you can use it now on Wi-Fi. So if you are in home office with the X30, if you are uh, using it somewhere where you have no wall outlets or you got the trolley where you only want to put in the power, yes, with the Android app, that's also a possibility now. And as you can see, we're starting with one. So the collaboration bar, which we named in the past, eh, this is now renamed to MTR for Android. And also the counting for the updates now starting with one. And so just good to know. Now, if you look at all those features, there's one which is particularly, I think, that stands out, and probably you've seen my uh, sneak preview earlier, uh, and that's that interface. <laughs> and we get a lot of positive feedback about it. So if you are in that small room, hurdle room, mid-size room, big room, you are now consistent across the board with the same user experience. So you got that calendar, which you even can refresh. Uh, you got that dial pad. Eh? So if you got a PSDN license, eh, it will automatically prompt you for that. I think a really powerful one. But it doesn't matter which room you're walking in. You get that same experience. And also on the side, you got that. That site menu, eh? here you can also set tracking on and off. You got PTZ controls, you can set presets, etc. But I will show you that in a separate video because, as I said, I'm always trying to keep it within one or two uh, coffees. Now, looking at the different uh, uh, features in this app, so we already had that UI 1080p, we already had 1080p receive eh, of the resolution, the video resolution. In the next version, we also will be getting 1080p sent, and eh? not uh, in in this release. It's a that's a public announcement from uh, from Microsoft. Eh? The spotlight was already there. The request to speak was a big one, eh? because you can imagine when you are in a Teams meeting and you have a question, and it's always a bit hard to unmute and say, hey, "I got a question," and yes, you don't want to interrupt, etc. So, request to speak was a really appreciated uh, one. The layout was already there, the tree by tree, dual screen support. So if you're using the X50, and uh, you got that uh, the dual screen support uh, uh, available. New meeting layouts were there, uh, so together mode and large gallery mode. So if you pass a certain threshold uh, of participants in the meeting, you will automatically have those options together mode and large gallery mode uh, that's an interesting uh, interesting one and also we have recording now yes so on the tc8 uh, you can start the recording and if you don't have the tc8 you will have the controls on the screen and uh, so as you probably seen in my earlier uh, videos uh, there's a lot of exciting new functionality uh, which microsoft uh, added on the tc8 also the whiteboarding so you got the whiteboarding send and receive functionality you can initiate that now from the uh, TC8. I think a really, really nice one. And this is not the basic whiteboarding. No, it's already announced with uh, sticky notes and you can collaborate together. Uh, so they're doing a lot of work on the whiteboarding piece. I just would say, just try it out, test it, uh, and, and let me know in the comments. HDMI ingest is not in here yet. And uh, so keep that in mind. That will come in the next update, somewhere this summer. Uh, I don't know exactly when it was Microsoft and it qualified it and, and, and test all that, but it's coming, the HDMI ingest. And that will come together with that bring your own device. And uh, so you can also 
turn the X30, X50, you can turn that into a USB speaker bar. So if you want to dial to something else, you just plug in the USB cable in your laptop and you can use, for example, use it with WebEx, etc. And so these two will be combined in an upcoming release. And of course, I will keep you updated on my channel with those new versions. Starleaf also had an update. There was already a, a release earlier, but I think good to mention as they're doing also some great work on the app. Uh, they already added the 1080p for the uh, Starleaf meetings, the dual screen support for the X50 and G7500, multiple camera support. This is a really appreciated one in those different uh, verticals, uh, especially education wireless content sharing uh, so you can use those meeting codes and even if you don't have a meeting uh, you can share content and we got the hid support so for the headsets and uh, to be in sync so as soon as you're using the app on the laptop and you're using that with the headsets you can use the mute unmute volume control etc and that's able to understand the language of that application really some great developments good to see that also on the starleaf side so i did an unboxing of that uh, so you can see one of my earlier videos if you want to see the experience of using uh, the starleaf also we got new rest apis in the 3.4 release and this was a big one requested from the av integrator so here you can now use the rest apis to enter and exit the device mode. And so this is this bring your own device mode. And so that means that you can use the system in case needed. You just connect that USB cable into the laptop and you can reuse camera, speaker, mic. So you can do that now externally from Extron or a Crestron controller or AMX controller. You can now use uh, those uh, REST APIs. We're able to control that. I think uh, Really, really nice one. Eh? Now further, I think good to know there was an update for the Trio 360. Eh? And in combination, of course, you can use it in combination with the X, uh, X30 and X, uh, X50. Eh? And uh, that means we got a new certified Teams version that is the 701. And I just wanted to mention it here. Eh? So you are aware of that new qualified version the interface when you pair it with the x30x50 uh, is still that virtual remote on the c60 uh, but as i understand uh, microsoft and poly uh, are working uh, on this to update that interface in the future also with sort of calendaring a joint meeting etc uh, but this is something that is in in uh, in progress trio c60 uh, now, the one which I'm also really excited about is the presenter mode. Presenter mode is probably a feature which you know from Studio USB. Uh, you've seen some videos uh, uh, of that in the past where I'm walking live uh, from left to right and the camera is automatically following you. Now, we had already in the Studio X30, X50 with group framing and uh, we had speaker tracking. And speaker tracking and sort of that it jumps from one speaker eh, to the uh, to the other now we have a new feature in the 3.4 and it is the presenter mode so yes you're able to live follow the speaker inside the room i think a very nice one but what is important is the x30 will have this in a sort of preview uh mode eh? so that means that you're not 100% sure it will stay in the X30 and the X50, it, have it will have it permanently. And so that is really a GA feature. So if you really want that presenter mode, then make sure you use that in combination with an X50 and so that it will, uh, it will stay. And let me show you in the um, interface where you can enable that. Now, if you go, for example, right here to your X50, you log in there so make sure eh, that you are on that version 3.4 uh, where you can go is you go to the video inputs and what you will see is we had 
tracking mode here, which has your frame speaker and frame group there. And as you can see, there's now a new option presenter tracking available. Now, what is good to know? Uh, there are some things to keep in mind, like being within the three meters of uh, Studio uh, X, uh, you just need to look in the camera. Uh, the lightning needs to be good, uh, so be aware of all those things. But look in the uh, the user guide, uh, the admin guide, uh, to uh, to walk also through those tips and tricks but as you can see it's very easy to enable this now another feature where i'm also really exciting about is the live mic switching so we have customers using the studio x50 in combination with an extension mic on the table now in the past when you hook up that extension mic all the mic functionality is then transferred to that extension mic and so you can imagine in the sort of a bigger room there's also somebody like a teacher who is standing in front of the room uh, but it makes more sense to use them both so with this release with this 3.4 release if the speaker is closer to that mic at the table it will use the mic at the table uh, if that speaker teacher or somebody is closer to the studio x50 mics it will use those building mics i think this is a very very powerful one and it's easy to enable this which i will show you so the speaker tracking mics are different and uh, these are all in studio x50 this is only the mic functionality for the speaker and to really pick up that uh, audio for the far end. Now, I can imagine a lot of scenarios for this eh? uh, uh, and I'm already using them today with some of my proof of concepts. Eh? So you just put that additional mic inside the classroom and specifically you can imagine with those classrooms, there's usually some challenges uh, with the acoustics etc now that additional mic i can tell you that really helps to put that further into the classroom and then the x50 and uh, will sort out where the speaker is closer i think a really really nice one now let me show you where you can enable this so again back at the x50 web ui uh, so you go here to audio you go right here now we have a brand new setting, which is very easy to enable, which you can find right here, enable auto mic switching. So that is that brand new setting. And now it is grayed out there. Eh? So you first need to connect that extension mic, which is not connected now, but then you only tick in the box and you're ready to go. Now further with that 3.4 release, that brings also mouse support a uh, wired or wireless mouse and it makes sense as i said in your home office you want to save space you just use your mouse into the system and you're ready to walk through that initial setup uh, i think that is uh, that is a really nice one and we added now officially support for that we saw a lot of exciting features so far uh, for the 3.4 release and there's still more to come but one which I think is a really nice one, which I recommend to try out and be aware as an admin only, is that you can change now provider and the settings will stay. So you might remember if you change between Zoom and Teams and other providers that there's a factory reset happening. Uh, admin, six digits, number, you have to push in all the time, change the password, set the date, backgrounds, all, all the things you had to configure every time. Not needed anymore. So as an admin using through the web UI or using our centralized platform lens, you can change now from conference provider and it will remember the account also. So if you logged into Teams and you switch to Zoom and you logged it into Zoom and you go back to Teams, you got ready again with the same account. Of course, eh, you could have a, a, a log out timer or something eh, on your account, then you probably need to log in again. Eh? But you can switch now 
without losing the accounts. So <laughs> I think it's a really powerful one and without losing settings. This is thing which I really recommend to just try it out. But be aware it's an admin only feature. Uh, so this is not something from the user side you would do. It's really something from the admin side. Now, a really, there's also a great one, is the capture device support. So we support now the Ino Genie. That capture card makes it possible to add an HDMI camera, now using a USB input of the X50 and the G7500. I think a really nice one. This card is now officially supported. I know there's some other cards used and they might work uh, with the X50 and G7500. And I always recommend if you have those uh, and you require additional other cards that needs to be supported, uh, let us know. And we can always try and see if we're able to enable those devices. So in the past, you had to sacrifice the HDMI um, content port uh, to use that for uh, a HDMI camera. And you could change that. So there is an option for the HDMI content uh, to change that to a video uh, input port. But now uh, with this support for this capture card, it's not needed anymore. You can now just use a USB port and add that HDMI camera to the X50 and the G7500. I think this is also a really nice one. Uh, and hopefully we'll see more of those supported devices in the future. Also this one, we have third party USB camera support. We support now the Fagio. We support the Hutley, so you can connect those cameras now to your X50, to your G7500 as an additional camera. So you can imagine in Zoom where you can switch cameras, so you're easy to add that room view and maybe you already have a camera in that room which you want to use as a generic room view. Eh? All possible now. Now this concludes my video, quite an extensive one, but as I said, eh, the 3.4 version has a lot of exciting new developments. Uh, so in my next videos, uh, I will dive deeper in those specific apps. Uh, so watch out for those uh, new videos and you can always subscribe uh, to my channel. So you're able to uh, get an alert as soon as I uh, post something and uh, already looking forward to the next video and to see you back again.